Just want to go over the uh, assignment in under week one, utilizing the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. Uh, first of all, just digressing is that this particular assignment didn't have anything to do with the uh, TIBA analysts. Uh, that'll be the focus of this coming week and week two, uh, dealing with time value uh, of money. Uh, so basically, once again, just uh, uh, go back, uh, look at that video I, I had up dealing with the utilization or an overview or an introduction to utilizing uh, the TIBA analysts. And then I have another uh, video, of course, in week two that gets in the specifics of utilizing uh, the, the calculator, the, the TIBA, from the standpoint of uh, the time value of money concept. But here in week one, uh, all what, really what I wanted you to do is just kind of focus in on uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, uh, just from the standpoint of identifying really uh, the inflation adjusted tuition cost, we'll say at Drury for day students. And um, I indicated uh, going back uh, in here, what is a dollar worth? And all of you would have to do, I utilized 1980. Um, I don't even know why I utilized 1980 uh, as our baseline, as our starting point. Um, so we would say um, 1980, and then we would put in really what tuition was way back then, $1,427.50, and and I believe I utilized uh, the academic year for 2017-18. Uh, since really uh, it defaults to 2018, we'll utilize 2018. And then straightforward calculation. It tells us that if we're just focusing in on inflation, tuition at Drury, we'll say for the 2018 or 2017-18 academic year, would cost $4,340 as such. Just looking at inflation or the price increase from 1980. And then I wanted you to uh, say or articulate why. In other words, we, we know that tuition costs exceeds $20,000 today at Drury. Okay, why the major discrepancy? Just based on inflation now, just in... On, on price increases, 4300 we'll say 4400 or $4,500 would be the tuition today. And the main reason um, that I think I identified with, with uh, uh, on, on some of your uh, uh, comments that I made, one of the main reasons, one of the main demand factors is really student debt student debt. Think back upon, uh, I think most of you have had the macroeconomics, demand and supply, demand and supply. Uh, we have a relatively, uh, the supply of, we'll say colleges and universities have not really changed that much. But what has changed, of course, is the demand factors, i.e. students uh, enrolling in college, um, either from the standpoint of a seated environment where you're like a day student or you're taking courses on a line. But the thing here is student debt. Just think of it from that standpoint. I mean, when you, when you look at it, stu student loan debt today stands at $1.5 trillion. Yes, $1.5 trillion dollars. The second largest debt component taken on by consumers. Uh, mortgages uh, would be number one, of course, and that is in the area of $7 trillion. Student loan debt, $1.5 trillion, is more than credit card debt. So really, that's one of the main driving forces or factors for the increase. Um, tuition. When you look at it in comparison just with the inflation adjusted factor that gives us, oh, tuition should be 4400 But then you look at a demand factor, 
the ease of access, how it is today to finance a college education would be the student in debt. Uh, so once again, uh, this particular assignment was more from the standpoint of not utilizing the TI analyst, but just kind of looking at really from the standpoint of price increases due to the inflationary factor, and then just think about it from the standpoint of looking at, oh, what would be the principal demand factor behind the increase uh, between, we'll say, 4,500 versus well in excess of, uh, we'll say, $25,000. So for this coming week, week two, uh, time value of money, make sure you look at my videos, and then you will have two specific assignments that'll be due uh, midnight Saturday um, over calculating a P&I payment, that'd be principal and interest, and then from the standpoint of looking at the total um, interest over 30 years, and then looking at what the total interest would be over 15 years. And then the uh, second specific assignment will be from the standpoint of calculating the future value of an annuity. So definitely for that one, go back over um, the video, go back over the notes that I have up there in regard to uh, looking at uh, an annuity, i.e., keep in mind, in other words, you have uh, a lump sum that would be, in other words, you invest X number of dollars today and you want to, to determine the future value of a lump sum versus an annuity where you're making an investment each year and you want to determine the future value.